Welcome back. Today we are going to talk about an exciting new feature called Cut It Out. Cut It Out is available for both Image Print Red and Image Print Black and works in conjunction with GraphTech cutting plotters like the ones in this image. Cut It Out brings a whole new level of photo finishing to large format printers. Never before has it been so easy to print and cut printed images of any shape or size. Everybody loves the cost effectiveness of printing on large format printers, but the labor involved in cutting each photo has led many to outsource or to look at less cost effective solutions. With Cut It Out, we are about to change all that. So let's get started and I'll show you just how easy it is. Let's go ahead and turn on the cutting feature. Right now I'm set to a page size of 24 by 30. You're not restricted by page size, so this just happens to be the page size I'm working with. I'm going to go under Advanced, and I'm going to go to Cutter Settings. Select the checkbox for Cut It Out. This is going to turn the feature on. You'll notice right away that in my layout window, the layout became a little smaller than I had before. This is because the cutter has grip rollers on each side and it's going to need to grip that page as it moves it through the cutter both forwards and backwards and it needs some some space on the top and the bottom. We gray this area out and make it non-printable so that all of our automatic layout functionality is still going to work as normal. And let's take a look at that. So, so with Cut It Out I can pretty much have anything I put on my layout window. It doesn't matter the shape, the size, where it's positioned. You know, it doesn't have to be neat um, and orderly. I could have it, you know, here and have, a, a, you know, another one somewhere else. And it doesn't have to fall into rows and columns with clear cut paths. The only real layout rule would be in regards to spacing. You want your images to either be butted up right against each other or at least a quarter of an inch apart. Regardless of how your images appear on the layout page, once you select print, all the cut vectors will be generated and stored in the job file. For this demonstration, so that we can really see how the features work, I'm going to lay out a page of all 4x6s and just change the cut it out settings so that we can see the same page of images cut four different ways. Let's go to the Auto Layout menu, and I'm going to select 4x6. Next, I'm going to change the gutters to zero, as I don't want any spaces between the images. These cutters are extremely accurate and will cut right on the boundary between the images. So unless we are cutting with an offset, I recommend leaving the gutter set at zero. We also sort all of our cuts, so when images share a boundary, there will be only one cut made. I'm going to leave the page origin point set to the default position, which will start laying out images in the very upper left corner of the printable area. Now I'm going to select all of my images and drop them on the page. We can see image print laying out each 4x6. This will just take a couple of seconds. Now paper saving, so even if I had a, a larger page size here and I only fill up uh, a portion of that page, um, again, the paper saving modes are going to be um, acknowledged and, and the paper will stop feeding when we're done inking the page. Um, there'll just be enough for the uh, registration marks that we're going to put on and the things that the cutter needs. All right, so I have all my images on the page and I'm going to go down to my cutting settings and we're going to walk through those. Um, so the, the first option we have is type and right now I'm set to rectangle so this is going to give me square corners. Um, radius will not come into play because I have a, a square corner. Uh, spread is uh, if I want to um, cut away from the edge of the image so I can cut in a positive uh, amount leaving a border or a negative amount and cut into the image. Um, for this I'm going to take my spreads to zero. I don't want any spread. I want this to cut right on the boundary of the image. Hanger spacing. So we've developed a, a whole hanger system 
Uh, and this is so that the images, as we cut them, they don't fall out of the paper. So we have to maintain the integrity of the sheet as we cut, otherwise the, the cutter would jam as, uh, as these cut out images start to fall out and the integrity of the page decreases. So we allow you, based on your, on your layout, the difficulty of the layout, how many images there are, how close they are together, we can change the hanger spacing. Um, right now I'm at uh, three quarters of an inch. Uh, that's a, a pretty good overall amount, but let's just say I was cutting just one big image um, on this page. I could increase that to you know three inches, four inches, or even more depending on how big uh, the image was and would have no problem at all. But because I'm cutting a lot of smaller images here, what I want to do is, is make sure that the integrity of that page is held together really good. Um, these images, they're going to pop right out when I'm, when I'm done anyways. I put a little bit of pressure on, on them and we'll show you how that works. The hanger size, that's the, the actual physical uh, size of the hanger. Um, we would recommend you leaving at this default right now. There's just really uh, no case in normal cutting to change that. I'm going to go ahead. I'm happy with this. I'm just going to send this off to my queue. Um, let me make sure that my queue is actually paused here because I don't want anything to print quite yet. Uh, it is. I'm going to go back and I'm going to say print. And we're going to send this page uh, off to our queue. Now, once it hits our queue, uh, all of the cutting vectors have al already been sent over and as a part of that job. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to just change this to a rounded rectangle. So this is going to give me rounded corners. And I can change the radius of that corner. I can go, you know, make it a more rounded or less rounded. Um, I like uh, this setting right here, 0 0.300. I'm going to keep it there. Again, spreads are zero. Hanger spacing, I'm fine with that. And I'm just going to send this again, print, and send it into the queue. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose ellipses. And this is going to cut an ellipse through each one of these four by sixes. Um, the ellipse is based on the center uh, of the top and bottom and the left and right. So it'll fit the ellipse and it's going to cut that. And again, we're going to use the same sheet. I'm just going to say print and we're going to send that into the queue. Now for the next one, what I want to do is, is show you uh, what an offset would look like. Um, so I'm going, to, I'm going to put an offset in to the image. And so we're going to cut and, and leave a nice white border around it. What I want to do is have a, a quarter of inch a gutter between the images because I'm going to have an eighth of an inch offset. I'm going to move my origin point over a little bit to give it some some space on the upper left. Next thing I'm going to do is take my images. I'm going to put my spread in, quarter of an inch. You're not going to actually see that because that's just where the cut's going to be. And I'm going to drop my images in. You'll notice I have a quarter of an inch uh, between each image as it's being laid out here. And when it cuts, it's going to cut an eighth of an inch, which will leave me a nice eighth inch border around each image. So I have that set. I'm going to say print and we're going to send that off into the queue. And now let's go look at our queue. So here's the four jobs that I sent to the queue and we can see the preview down here. Job one and job two. They look all the same, except for the last one, which has a quarter inch um, spread between the images. Now we're going to go ahead. I'm going to enable my queue and we're going to send these off to the printer and let them print. And we're actually going to show you the cutter in action and, uh, and get a good look up close at how this all works. Let's take a quick look at one of the prints rolling out of the printer. And I'm going to point out a couple things to you. 
First, we can see a registration mark, uh, the very top mark that's in the center of the page there. That's a mark that we put down um, that allows the paper saving modes of either the OEM driver or our own driver in Enrichment Black uh, to keep that area protected um, so that the, the printer doesn't try to cut that area off. Next, we'll look at the marks on the right-hand side and the left-hand side of the printable area there. Those marks are the registration marks that the cutter uses to align its coordinate system. Uh, this is what makes the, the cut lines extremely accurate. Okay, now we're gonna look at the uh, print finishing here. Uh, take a couple seconds. It's gonna lay down the bottom registration marks and uh, cut the job and we're ready to take this over to the cutter. I've loaded the first sheet into the cutter. From our spooler, I'm gonna select that job file and drag it right on top of the red scissors. And the cut information will be sent over to the cutter. The first thing the cutter is gonna do is locate each registration mark. This is how the cutter calibrates itself for accuracy. Once it finds each mark, it's gonna to return to the top of the page and start the cutting sequence. We sort the cuts from hardest to easiest and vertical cuts are done first, followed by the horizontal cuts. Now let's just sit back and watch as each of our four pages get cut in the different styles.
Thanks for watching our demonstration of Cut It Out.